So I've been doing graphic design for a long time now. I've also been doing photography and videography and really all things creative are so interesting to me. And I wanna share those resources with you guys. So I figured I have a great excuse to do my first tutorial. I hadn't really done car photography before, so I wanted to test some of my new gear as well as have something to edit and just build up my portfolio with and what perfect way to take that and implement that into a tutorial. So I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this. All right, so first things first, you'll notice that we have a really well and evenly lit subject here. I only used the natural lighting that was inside the warehouse, like the overhangs and stuff, and I kept the car on. But other than that, I didn't have any external lights, and it would have been fun to play with for some extra edge lights and here and there, but I was in kind of a crunch, so I went ahead and just used the lighting that we have. So what I want to do is make sure that I'm able to create something with high contrast and really bold shadows, highlights, everything just kind of separated really, really well and have a really nice color to it. So in this case, I want to do it a little bit cooler than this image, even though I like it how it is. Um, I would like to make this a little bit cooler, but the first thing we're going to start with is the lighting. So exposure, we can bump down to negative 1.3. Um, so already you'll notice everything's brought down. So this was shot in raw. And you'll notice that I can play around a little bit more with the details, but you can obviously do this if it's a JPEG. So first thing, I brought down the exposure. Now I'm going to up the contrast quite a bit. I'm gonna do 50. We're already popping out a little bit more. Really, really nice here. Highlights, whites I'll bring down, shadows and blacks I'll bring up, and then I'll counterbalance that a little bit with how I use my point curve. So with highlights, I'm gonna do plus 40 shadows minus 40 whites I'll do minus 40 and blacks I'll do plus 40 as well so obviously I did those in the exact numbers you can tweak them a little bit more but I found that somehow these work really well now you're having a lot of contrast between the lights that are still on the overhang but then you're not too dark with the shadows so with the point curve we're going to start with the black and white panel before we get into the colors now you can put down three points and then twist them a little bit. But honestly, I don't need that middle one very much. So I'm going to adjust it how I want it. The very first thing I want to do is I want to brush the blacks a little bit and bring up that, that shadow to get that nice like faded look. Now, you don't want to go too high. Even with it's the style you want to go for, if you go too far with it, it can feel really, really overdone. And so I want to have it up just enough to bring up the shadows, but I'm going to counter that by bringing down a little bit from the low mids about here. Now I'm going to take the highs, go up, maybe bump this down just a little bit more. I think it's a little too much. I think that's probably good. So we'll take red and green and we're going to crush them a little bit around here and then bring you up out here and then maybe a midpoint here get a little extra do the same thing with the green come down go up here maybe a little bit less right here a little bit less right here it's all about that fine tuning now with blue I'm going to brush a little bit, have it go over, bring the mid up. We get just a little bit here and there. Maybe even still delete that point. Sometimes that middle point can be good, sometimes it's not. It just really depends on how you're editing it. So, pretty happy with that. Now we'll move on to color. First things first, I'm going to bump down to about 3500 Kelvin. So that really brings out that blue. Tint, I'm going to probably keep it a little bit less, but around the same. Now, vibrant saturation are really fun to work with. I like to bring up my vibrance and bring down my saturation when I'm doing something like this. So I'm going to bring up my vibrance to about 20 and bring down my saturation to about 15 already getting a little bit more contrast but now it's too blue so what are we gonna do now 
we're gonna dive into one of my favorite parts of color editing, which is the color mixer. First things first, we are going to start with hue. So you gotta think a lot about what you need to pop and what's not gonna pop, what you want changed. So I don't really have a lot of colors in this. Um, actually, I think I'll start with saturation because this is gonna be what changes the most. So there's a little bit of orange here, a little bit of red there. I'm going to boost it just slightly about here. Gonna bump orange up all the way. You can't really see it, but it's there. The yellow I'm going to bring down, even though you have some in the shot. Green, leave the same. Aqua, leave the same. Blue, I'm gonna bump that down. So already you've got the coolness, but it's not overly cool now. Purple, magenta, bring that down too. So you get this nice kind of cool. And honestly, I can bring it down just a little bit more. With luminance, this one I don't tweak with a lot. Any kind of red and orange, I'm going to bring up just slightly, bump the yellow down. Actually, bump it up a little bit. Green, lead the same. Aqua, boost a little bit. Blue comes down a little bit. Purple and magenta, not really going to touch that. And then hue, this is where you can alter things around. Um, I'm going to twist where my purple and magenta are, what kind of blue I have. I might just honestly leave it about here, orange here. And you can do it by color, but I love having all of them out at once. So you can kind of get a greater idea of where everything is. All right, so that's looking pretty good right now. Next thing we're going to do is effects. So not a lot here. I really don't like using clarity very much. It's easy to like just like this, like, oh, yeah, that looks really cool. But it's kind of overdone, in my opinion. It really depends on your style. But with this, I don't really want it to stand out that much. So I'm going to probably put it up to only about 20. So it messes with the whole photo in the way I want it, but not too much. Now texture, I do like to boost a little bit. So I'm going to probably go about 35 on my texture. You can kind of see a little bit of details popping out. Um, definitely want a little vignette, not a lot. I think a 12, just to kind of focus in on the subject just a little bit more. Grain, going to leave that alone. And Split toning I'm going to leave alone as well. Now, you can do some really cool split toning, but honestly, I I like how this is as is, so I'm only going to keep it off in this case. Details, I want to sharpen maybe just a little bit. Not a lot. Noise reduce, just a little bit. This wasn't very grainy in the start. As you can see, it's actually still pretty clean. Um, color noise reduction, I'm not really going to touch that. Optics, remove chromatic aberration. I've got the built-in lens profile put in. This was with my 20 millimeter, I believe. It was either my 20 millimeter or my 16 millimeter. Geometry, not really anything here. You can use it to level, but I used my built-in leveling on the A7 III to make sure that I was good on this. So all the details are good. Now, here's where the extra magic happens. I'm going to use some gradient colors. So I want to make the shadows in the foreground a little bit darker and bring a little bit more light to the actual lights that are present. Now, the reason why I'm gonna do it the specific way I know it is, even though the viewer doesn't know this, I know where the outside light source is coming in from. So the natural lighting is really good in this warehouse, but one thing that really helped, even though we were further away from it, one of the bay doors all the way to the left of this image was open and had a lot of sunlight blasting in. You can't see it except for maybe a little bit on the car door around here, but otherwise you can't tell. Now, I want to remember that and exaggerate it just a little bit, but then that's going to create a little bit more shadow over here as the overhead lights kind of turned off. So we're going to mess with shadows first. I'm going to start my line gradient. Just do this. Kind of in this direction going to bump the exposure down a little bit, bump the contrast up just slightly. I'm happy with that. I'm going to do it again with another one. 
just to get a little bit extra. And then one more with the same settings. Maybe, maybe not with as much of the loss of exposure here, but I'm going to keep it like that. And then one more over here, but this one is going to be more of a brighter exposure. So just a little bit. So you get a little bit more detail over here. It's a nice kind of oval, diagonal oval shape of exposure. Now, obviously you can edit this however you want, but I liked knowing that this lighting was coming from over there and that it was actually a little bit darker over here, even though in my original photo, the lighting was more balanced. I wanted to exaggerate what I was seeing. The next thing I'm gonna do is use a radial gradient. Now, all I'm gonna use this for is the lights, and even though you can't see it very well, the little orange light here. Kinda of go, it's cool how the shape is. I can kind of stick it where the light is up the exposure a little bit, contrast, and up the shadows just slightly. And the cool thing is with gradients like this, at least how I have it set, it will retain the same settings so when you create another one, it's able to leave the same settings on. And boom, we got a little light. And we're gonna do a really thin oval. Even though it's not the exact shape of the light, we're gonna put it over the light, kinda make it exaggerate. And just a very slight one here. Click off. All right. So we got a lot going on here, but man, I'm really happy with this. You can tweak it just a little bit, so you can see we go from this, which is a really evenly balanced photo, and, and it's not bad, but if you want to create a dark and moody, dynamic photo, boom, you got this. So that's it for this tutorial. As you can see, I really love a huge dynamic range and I love big contrast. And if that's your style or if that's a style that you're looking to emulate, I hope that you find my tutorial extremely useful. I plan on doing a lot more tutorials coming up. So if you have any suggestions, any things you'd like to see, please drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe so you can stay up to date with some more tutorials and other videos. If you really enjoyed how this photo looked, I actually posted a little bit of them on my Instagram, my Facebook, as well as my online portfolio. Also wanted to give one really quick plug because I do stream gaming, graphic design, and I do some guitar stuff as well under KPXV3 on Twitch. I will link that below as well as gaming with my buddies under the Rad Lads. Again, I will put that in the description below. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Peace!